All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, thanks for having me, G5A, and it's, it's great to be here with uh, Sheens and Rohit. Um, it's interesting that all of you are here actually to hear me speak because most of my cooks would be happier than for me to not speak. Um, but we'll just, this three fingers, right? This is how much time I spend on computer. Okay, so I was I was really fascinated to talk about this because I think, you know, uh, and I, I might you know date myself a little bit, but I think uh, we don't appreciate the the amount of work that goes into something anymore. We just like to see a picture of it, and then we click like, and then okay. So I think maybe there are probably people in this audience this audience that that would agree with that. Um, but you know, more so than anything, I think what we what we need to be focusing on more is just. Uh, the enjoyment of going through what it takes to get to the end result. And, you know, when I was putting this presentation together, it actually made me really excited because what I'm going to take you through is what it took to open our restaurant, Americano. And it made me realize that actually what I enjoy most about this restaurant, yes, obviously the day-to-day -day is great. It's great to, to see our guests every day and, you know, to be a successful restaurant. But I really enjoyed putting this whole thing together. Um, and when I was a kid, you know, going to the library, seeking, seeking out information, uh, when I was a cook, uh, being, you know, raised in the traditional sort of French brigade system and getting, you know, whipped by my chefs, like that was the part that I really enjoyed. It wasn't so much, uh, what the end result would be. And I think I'm still waiting to find out what that end result is going to be. Uh, so this process and the idea of, um, of, of, of really enjoying that, uh, is something that really uh, that fascinates me, and I think we're tying in uh, the theme of of pentimento uh, this evening. And for for those that maybe are not entirely familiar with that, I wasn't myself. Uh, it's sort of the clues that are left behind uh, in art, where you know an, an artist may have taken another direction, right? So there might be an outline of the original portrait, but then you know it was going to be something a little bit more uh, subdued, and then it became something fancy because you know, for whatever reason. So I think with, with restaurants, we all go into restaurants, we eat there, we complain about something, we order something, we leave, we pay our bill. We may not actually understand everything that has gone into it. And what I found so interesting about this idea or this concept of pentimento is that it's always there, whether or not you're looking for it. And in fact, the only, the only way that you discover it is by seeking it out. And so I'd like to just kind of take you through our entire process um, of opening Americano and all the little details, all the thousands, I, I can't tell you, thousands of decisions that went into making this restaurant just exist, let alone, you know, the day-to-day -day decisions. Um, and so I think it might be interesting for you uh, or give you a little bit more appreciation next time that you go into a restaurant, you know, what it really takes. Um, and it's not so much about the effort, but just knowing the sort of the 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 foundation or, or knowing the process of what brings a restaurant to life uh, might give you a bit more appreciation next time you're there. So the the first part about opening a restaurant, and this is okay, is its conceptualization and inspiration. So uh, we talk a lot about concepts, restaurant concepts, and I'm not in the concept business, just so you know. I can't I can't sell my concept to you. You can't eat my concept. But the conceptualization is an important part of the process because it's what gives you that first little bit of a push, right? It's something like, oh, cool, I want to open a, an Italian restaurant. And that's what Americano started out as. So these are just a few pictures of, you know, my, my eat, pray, love trip to, <laughs> to Italy, okay? Uh, we've got, you know, the going and exploring the, the Barik Caves, uh, the top left, uh, where they make balsamic vinegar, you know, beautiful uh, tagliolini on the right with white truffle, which I went and harvested myself, pizza in Naples, something in the market, I don't know, train tracks in <laughs> Rome or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is what kind of, it, it, it like, it sort of so started sowing the seed, right? Like, you know, what is this place going to feel like? And, you know, what is going to inspire it? And, you know, I say, like, we're not in the concept business. We're in the experience business. And I was talking with Sheena earlier. 
you know, I don't consider myself an artist because um, I think that what I do is more of a craft. I'm sort of on a daily basis kind of trying to perfect these little things that have already been done. I'm not necessarily creating anything new. Uh, but maybe where I've graduated to being an artist uh, is in my creation of Americano because this is where I'm actually crafting or creating uh, an experience where we evoke emotion or we create sensations. Um, and so, you know, I think that this is maybe the beginning, but not necessarily what it's become. Okay. So we've got, you know, artichokes. This is, this is the guy I went truffle hunting with on the right. And that's the big old black truffle that we found. Um, you know, and I, I don't think that if you go to Americana right now, you're going to see any of this. I don't think we even really get very good artichokes here. Uh, but the point being that there's this feeling, and I think that what we tried to do was to, to convey that. And so once you've got the concept and the inspiration, then now suddenly you have to come up with a name. And so people take this more seriously than others. But I locked my partner in our flat for like four weeks straight. And we did not go out I mean, and she did. I didn't. I, I, you know, I barely showered. We wanted to figure out what the name was going to be. And I think part of that is also it's having it's just having this identity. You know, you like you just you, you need that. You need that sense of security. OK, what's the name going forward? So we put all these parameters. And so, I mean, th this is literally notes from that time when we were creating the name. I, I haven't changed it. And some of it is just I mean, it doesn't quite necessarily make sense, but. You know, we wanted it to be something which was humble. We wanted it to be something which was fun and approachable and democratizing. We wanted it to embody, <laughs> by the way, it's impossible to do this because most of the great names have already been taken. Okay. So we wanted it to have all these qualifying factors, but we didn't necessarily know what that name was going to be. And every time we're like, that's the name. Then we go online and then there were like 15 or 20 restaurants with that name. Um, and the main thing was, Again, this feeling, we knew, okay, it was going to be an Italian restaurant. All right, it's going to be uh, an Italian neighborhood restaurant. So it has to be a place that people can come and feel themselves and be themselves. Um, and so we put all these parameters and then we come up with a name and, you know, and hold it against these and then see where it fit. And I'm going to embarrass myself, but um, this was sort of this, this world, this word cloud that we created. These are literally all names that we've come up with and they're terrible, some of them. What is this, Pepper? Who would name the restaurant Pepper? Uh, but we create, we just literally, every single name that we could think of, we just put it down on this piece of paper. We've saved it intentionally. Uh, obviously, the one that, you know, stands out is Americano. But, you know, it, it, it is a very important thing. But as I'll talk about a little bit later, you know, the branding is what eventually brings the name to life. So, you know, it was something, I, I had this, this sort of, uh, this like mental block, I could not proceed without a name. But at the same time, we knew that, okay, whatever the name eventually became, we'd be able to <laughs> kind of get beyond that with the branding. I mean, Zuka Review, is that even a name for a restaurant? Spritz. Okay. Good thing we didn't name our restaurant Spritz. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, after the name, then, then you come to the location. And the location is so vital. I mean, what do they say? I think it was like in the 1930s, 1920s. Someone came up with this real estate article and they said the three most important things about finding uh, a property, location, location, location. And it couldn't be further from the truth because where we found our space eventually in Calagoda, um, one lane over is like the worst and inaccessible by vehicles. And one lane over is like one of the best now because that's where Trishna and Calagoda Cafe are. And... When you're finding a space, there's so many things that come into play. Obviously, um, you know, you want it to be accessible, but then if it's in prime real estate, can you afford it? And we're just like a mom and pop shop in the end. So, you know, we need to find a place that had good value. Um, and I think that what we ended up finding was, it could have been any more perfect, but of course it took us eight months to find it. And I think what we didn't necessarily realize was, you know, uh, how difficult it is to find spaces in Calaba or Calagoda. But we knew that we wanted certain things. So we wanted uh, we wanted a place with high ceilings. Of course, if you have high ceilings, chances are there's already going to be a mezzanine. So a mezzanine takes a beautiful high ceiling. 
and turns it into two really, really low ceilings <laughs> in most cases. Uh, so we wanted to find a place that had nice high ceilings, but with no mezzanine. And it turned out that the place that we found in Calagoda was this place called AK Bistro, um, as you can see here. And when you walk in, the first thing that you see is this massive staircase that looks like it belongs to like a grand ballroom at the Ambani's. But of course, <laughs> as you go upstairs, it's anything but that. Uh, so this was the bar originally, and what you're seeing are these beams that used to support the uh, mezzanine that we're walking back. Uh, you can see here, this is the video that was literally sent to me when I was in Mexico by my partner who had seen the space. Uh, this was the kitchen, a very tiny kitchen, and if you're a chef like me with an ego, that will not do simply. Uh, this was the small dish area, and that was that. Um, but we knew that in this space there was a ton of potential and it was small. It was something we could control. And the best thing about it was that the BMC had destroyed the mezzanine. And so we knew at that point that it was perfect. Now on the left, you'll see, this is from the grand ballroom staircase looking downwards. This is sort of like a, um, a chandelier made out of string. Their concept was sort of where fashion meets food. So the strings, uh, you know, the strings. Uh, and then on the right, and then on the right is the dining room, which, as you can see, imagine eating in that dining room. You know, you just feel this oppression, right? You'd feel uh, very claustrophobic, not particularly nice. Um, and so we knew that that all had to go. But in there somewhere was the place for us, and uh, everything worked out, thank God. And uh, that's where we are now. So. Once you find the location, and again, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough, you know, how uh, difficult, but also how important uh, that process of really being choosy, finding a place, ah, is this the right place? Yeah, we're desperate, but let's wait. We're going broke, let's wait. Um, finally, you find the place and then design. Now, in terms of restaurant design, I mean, we could have a whole like hour long discussion on just tables, just chairs, but, you know, I, I think... This is a part of the process which was probably the most consuming for us in terms of, you know, how much energy it took. Uh, we initially brought on um, uh, a team of architects and eventually took it over ourselves because it was something that we realized we had to be in control of every single part of it. Um, and I think it's something that you you just don't you don't see when you're in a restaurant. You don't acknowledge or you don't understand. Uh, when you're in a restaurant, but everything is so important. Thousands of decisions have gone into just you, where you are sitting in your restaurant chair. Um, and for us, it wasn't so much about creating a place that felt luxurious or that looked like a special place from the outside, though I think it, it does. We achieved that. It was more like when you're sitting in your chair, how many centimeters are from the top of your lap to the bottom of the table? And when you start thinking about these things, that's when you really start getting into what the guest experiences. And our bar, I feel, is one of the coolest places in the city to have a meal, not because it's a bar and it's fun and you get drunk and cool. It's because we've literally mapped out the exact amount of distance that you need to sit comfortably and your knees have enough space under the bar, but the bar comes out enough to where you can have a plate and how it feels ergonomically eating from a certain distance. All these things which you don't have to think about. I don't want you to think about as a guest, but we thought about it and we obsessed over, over and over and over and over again. And that process was so special. It's something that excites me even going into our next project because that's what I want to experience as someone who's been in this industry for 20 years, that's what I want the person at the restaurant that I'm going to, to be thinking about. And when you come and eat at our bar, you come and sit in our dining room, you feel that comfort without knowing where it's coming from. You know, you, you, you're able to sit upright in the dining room and the table doesn't come up to your chin, but it also doesn't go down to your knees. It's all in the right place. And yeah, obviously not everyone is the same size or height, but that's why we got some of our investors who are three times my size because I'm a little guy and some people who are smaller than me to sit there and find what is best. And, you know, when we talk about design, 
I'm I'm really I have no design sense. I have no fashion sense. I, I there's very little that I know, but what I do know is systems, logic. I know uh, how to create a space which has a good flow, and so the design not only incorporates the good things that people want to see from the outside, but it also has plenty of space for us to do what we need to do in order to make the guest really happy. Um, so now you can see, you know, sort of a large difference between what it was when it was AKA Bistro and what it is now. And this incorporates some of our branding, some of our color schemes, but it also just looks like kind of a friendly place that you want to go and be. Uh, we created these sort of wooden uh, decks on the bottom to put all these plants. We really wanted to incorporate a lot of, um, not only natural light, so we broke some of the some of the windows to allow more uh, white uh, light to come in, but we also wanted to make it very inviting with, with plants, and that also continues on into the inside. Uh, just so you know, we spent we spent probably a couple of days just choosing the color of the awning itself. Obsession. So now this is what we have. Uh, <laughs> so you can see, there's no more uh, there's no more grand staircase. We've knocked that out. Okay, everywhere that there was like um, an AC duct, we've knocked that out in order to allow more uh, light to come in. Uh, now this is the main dining room, which used to be claustrophobic. Now it's all open. Um, aside from, you know, sort of these more like kind of interior design things, um, just literally you can see how the space is transformed into something which is a place very welcoming, a place that you want to be in. Um, whereas the kitchen before was hidden in the back, it's now all open. So this is all part of the open kitchen. This here, where you can see these kind of lights on the left, uh, that's sort of where I stand. And I make sure that all the food going out is obsessed over, like every other detail. Um, now we're going into the kitchen. Uh, we have this gold-tiled wooden oven where we make all of our pizzas. Um, and then going back here further. So this is actually just this door here is where the old kitchen started. So we brought a lot of that out into the dining room. And this is our nice cozy little kitchen. So, and this was just taken a couple of days ago. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the design is what really, it's not the whole restaurant, but as it's coming together, it's something that's really, really special to see. Um, you know, we talked about in the beginning, the, the conceptualization, the inspiration. I don't think much of this reminds you necessarily of, you know, uh, hunting for truffles or the uh, artichokes at Testaccio Market in Rome. But it just, for me, it exudes that feeling uh, that you get when you're comfortable, when you're in a place that feels welcoming. And that's what Italy, to me, is about. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, you, you want to talk about sort of pentimento, you can see uh, up on the left and over on the right, like those are the sort of the scars, if you will, uh, of the old mezzanine. Right. So even when you walk in there today, you can see what it was and, you know, what it was going to become and what it is now. Uh, these are just a few more design details. You can see our, you know, our green marble bar, which um, is something that we, we really wanted to use sort of local materials, uh, Indian materials and make them look very luxe. And when we were telling our family and our friends that we were using green marble, a lot of people had a lot of opinion about that. Uh, but we were very sure that it was something that we wanted to do and we found the right pieces and we sliced it all up and we cut it the right way. And it turned out to be something that people really appreciate now. Um, so then, um, you know, in the beginning we were talking about sort of the name and how we obsessed over the name, but it's really the branding that gives the meaning to the name. Uh, and this process was really, really... <laughs> It, it was very laborious. It was, it was really, really fun. Um, and when we first told, so uh, my partner, Malika, her cousin, uh, he runs a company called uh, Quick Brown Fox. And he's one of the most talented people that I know. And when we first told him the name, we thought that the phone had cut out because he wasn't saying anything. <laughs> We're like, okay, it's going to be Americano. Uh, Han Hanuman. Hanuman. You there? Uh, he... He hated the name. He thought that it was like we were going to embarrass ourselves. We we're going to be like the laughing stock. And he thought that basically, okay, well, if you guys aren't a, a cafe, right, then, then what are you doing calling your place Americano? But obviously then we sort of went into all the reasons that we had based on these parameters that we had given, why we qualified it as a name that we could use. Um, 
And as we fed him with these ideas, he started breathing life into the name. And these are just a few examples. We have 16 different PowerPoint presentations that he gave us as we sort of further refined what it is that makes us and why <clears throat> and why one logo didn't work and why one did. And we sort of quickly refined it. But yeah, I mean, you can see that the one closest, uh, so the second from the bottom, it's closest to what we have now, but it's still not. Uh, this was, I think, maybe the third PowerPoint presentation. But these are just a few examples of some of the different kind of, I think the, this, the second one from the top was like, well, we could put all these different symbols in it and overcomplicate it. Well, obviously, we didn't go for that. Uh, but yeah, you know, some of them are based in different sort of pop pop culture references and um, some are just simple fonts. And, but we um, we were very interested in the process of creation and that's why we wanted the the logo to be something which is hand drawn. And so you can see this is Kriti here on the right of uh, turmeric design. And so she was working with uh, with Hanuman. And you can see this is actually, the, this is like the beginning. This is the synthesis of our brand, which I, I just, I, I'm like ready to open our next restaurant now. I just think this is such a cool process. And you can see on the left, all these different variations. And this is just her hand, but obviously then each letter gets kind of brought in um, to uh, Illustrator and then becomes part of the language or the font language. Um, and then finally, this is what our, uh, our logos have become. So we chose a color. Uh, we chose a, uh, chose a color scheme, which sort of also reflected what was going on in the inside of the restaurant. Um, and I mean, everything from the size of the R, you know, I think the, the first rendition of this, the R was much larger. Uh, the C was a bit smaller. The A was underlined, but in the front, you know, and all these things, when you go to a restaurant again, like you're just not, you're not going to recognize any of these and you're not supposed to. You know, this is this is something that we go through as the people that are creating these projects. But it, it it's something that maybe next time when you go, you'll actually think, hey, OK, well, like, how did that get there? I bet you someone thought of that. Um, and so, you know, we have a few uh, you can see here we have you know some of our peripherals. You can see how everything has kind of come to life there. Uh, here you can see uh, we have our coasters, which, again, are all these sort of hand drawn uh, cartoons. <laughs> Um, with different Italian expressions on them. We have our takeaway containers and takeaway bags and all of that. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a really special process, a branding process. Uh, and, you know, that also kind of lends itself into a lot of the, the little details that go into the restaurant. So, you know, we, we had a company called Raiden Design design all of our crockery. So all of our uh, coffee cups, all of our plates, bowls. Uh, this here is actually a hand-turned stone bowl. We have it in a few different types of stone, and we keep these in the freezer so that when we serve ice cream, they go into really cold bowls. I don't know. It's just it's totally like like geek stuff, but in the end, you know that's what makes Americano a special place, in my opinion. It's 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 not special because of one thing. I don't want you to come and just appreciate the pasta, although I hope you do. But it's. You know, I want you to come and experience everything that we've done. And that's why I say the artistry is more in the creation of this experience and less in the creation. Of, I mean, I, look, I'm a chef with an ego and I'd love nothing more than to come and tell you, tell you guys about how I create dishes and how, you know, how masterful I am. But I really think that, you know, my greatest achievement has been in creating this sort of really unique experience with my partner, Malika, and how we were able to, you know, put you in a seat, get your attention for two to three hours uh, you know, get you to enjoy the company of the people that you're around uh, and not necessarily think about any one thing, but have so many of these amazing details come together uh, in a way that you couldn't experience elsewhere. Uh, these are just some more of these details we've had. You know, we've got uh, a light which shines on the gold mosaic tiles on the wood oven just so that they reflect against the wall. That's the only purpose of this light is to create reflection on the wall. <laughs> you know, uh, we have uh, a, a mobile which makes use of the space. So we have so much vertical space to, to, to sort of create a sense of movement, also to, um, to mirror that sense of balance that we have in the, uh, in the food and also in the service style. Uh, these, th this is our, our plates which we had made just for the butter. So 
I knew that I wanted the butter to be this shape. And so the plates were made just so that the butter could sit on them just so. Um, and then lastly, you know, I guess I am a chef, so I should talk to you guys a little bit about menu. Um, so this is, again, sort of uh, mirroring that uh, the, the concept of the uh, mobile that we have in the space, um, you know, kind of using these different elements, um, you know, having a little bit about the restaurant on the back and not really knowing what that's going to be, and then having a little quote from me, which just says, hey, guys, I'm not an asshole anymore, I promise. I just want to make you happy. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, you know, the, what, was, what I found really interesting about this process, and, you know, this, again, was something we, we went over with our branding team, but, you know, deciding, like, how the menu is going to be laid out. And, you know, I, I guess one of my claims to fame is that I brought small plates, small and large plates to India back 10 years ago. And wanting to, like, move away from that and do something different. Uh, but not just different for different sake, and also thinking about well, what's the restaurant about? You know, what is the what is what is <laughs> what is our identity as a restaurant? Is our identity as a restaurant about me, or is it about Americano? And so, you know, we serve pizza and pasta. We're not a traditional, typical Italian restaurant. We serve pizza and pasta because these are things that are anchors to a community. These are things which are very, very uh, appealing. They're very easy for people to understand and to enjoy, um, and they're very accessible. And so I wouldn't say that what we do is, is typical. I wouldn't say it's traditional. Um, but I do feel that it's something that we really believe strongly in, and so that's something that we wanted to showcase. But at the same time, we have these share plates, which kind of allow me to have a little bit more um, creative freedom, I guess you can say. So you see like Bangkok style calamari. Well, that's obviously not Italian just by the word Bangkok. So this is not an Italian restaurant by any means. And th this also goes back to what we're talking about with the name is that the name doesn't pigeonhole us into any one particular style. So even though it does kind of allude to the fact that there are either American or Italian influences, we can be anything. Uh, and the name kind of gives us a little bit of that flexibility. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, deciding to have the menu this way was sort of, you know, we've got Creation Town over there on the right. We've got sort of, you know, you know, your more accessible things in the middle. And then on the left uh, at the top, we have the cocktail bites, which obviously go great with our cocktails. And we have a very strong cocktail program, which we which we promote. Um, so here we have just a few things that we've done. You know, our corn ribs have become this little sensation of their own. And then we have a cheese plate, which is great with cocktails. We have our pizzas, which I'm just totally obsessive about pizza. It's um, sort of a little pride of mine. Uh, and then some pastas, meatballs, you know, the place, the, the place I want, the di I want there to be the dishes that you're like, oh yeah, obviously, you know, a neighborhood Italian restaurant is going to have some meatballs, it's going to have some pasta, but then I want you to experience it in totality. So me showing you a picture of it, I mean, yeah, hopefully it looks great. But when you're in the when you're in the space, um, that's where it really has the impact because uh, we did we did a swap with O Pedro recently, and you know uh, we brought our menu there. And one of our biggest concerns was that you know people aren't necessarily coming to us only to have this one thing. They're coming for the entire experience. So they're coming for you know all the branding. They're coming for uh, the comfort of the chairs. They're coming for the the distance between the lap and the top of the table. They're coming for all these things. They they don't know why they're coming, but that's why they come. That's why we're sold out every single night. And it, yes. The meatballs are great, but you just want to be there. And this is something that, you know, I learned over the course of this project is, you know, the, the process of examining every single element that goes into this is what has allowed us to be successful, uh, not overlooking anything. And there are some things that we looked at, like I will never put cut up a stone in a bathroom ever again. But obviously, <laughs> you know, it took me, you know, uh, going through this to understand that. But um, I, I will say that, you know, the, the process of doing anything, whatever it is, is for me probably the most enjoyable part. And I think it's what, I think it's what defines us. I, I, I remember being in culinary school and I had these, um, these teachers. And for some reason at the school that I went to, all the teachers said the same thing. And I don't know if you guys have gone to schools like that. But they all said this. They all had the same expression. You know, Alex, there's a million ways to skin a cat. 
And I was like, that's a really gruesome thing to say. I don't understand why you are you saying this. But yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's like, you know, there, there are a ton of ways to get to where you're going. Everyone's going to the same place or so many people are going to the same place. But what's going to make you different is the way you choose to get there. And as long as you're getting where you're going, I guess you're in good hands. Thank you guys so much.